I'm gonna play Ezreal for 10 hours to see if he actually takes skill or not. First, I looked up the most common items and runes for Ezreal. Most builds revolve around Trinity Force and Man Immune. You need these items for the extra mana and the extra damage on your Q. Your next items are usually Ravenous Hydra or Sherelda's Grudge. Usually you build Hydra first if you're ahead so you can snowball, or Sherelda's for the slow and armor pen into tanky comps. And your last item can be GA if you're against Assassins, Mauve Melmordius if you're against a lot of AP, Frozen Heart if you're against a lot of AD, or Spear of Shojin to maximize your damage and give you some survivability. Your boots are usually Ionian Boots of Lucidity, but you can also build Plated Steel Caps into AD comps and Merc Treads into AP comps or comps with just a lot of CC, but don't build Berserker's Greaves because you auto attack a lot less than most other AD carries. And lastly, for your runes, you have three options. Press the attack is the best overall because you can activate it quickly. First strike scales harder and gives you some extra money. And conquer is really good for longer fights. I personally like conquer a lot better, so that's the one I used, but you can use any of these three. I was a little nervous for my first game because ADC is my least played role ever. Basically, I was so bad if I was playing with friends and I said something like, I wanna play ADC this game. All of a sudden my friends were too busy to play another game. But you know what? I can't really blame them. Not only do I have a lot to learn about Ezreal, but I basically have to learn a whole new role at the same freaking time for this challenge. My next game didn't start off much better. But a minute later, our Belveth ganked and I managed to get a kill. But at this point, I was so nervous, I just wanted to play as safe as possible. Then there was a fight at Rift Herald where I actually somehow managed to steal Herald. Also, I got a kill on the Silas and then had to get the fuck out of there. Fast forward a little bit and we decided to sneak Baron, which actually went super well. And this time I managed to even get a double kill. Despite a few good plays, we were still too far behind to actually win this game. I did kill Silas with my dying breath though. Fuck you! This game I learned the issue with playing too safe is I just don't do that much damage. So somehow I have to figure out how to live life on the edge to do maximum damage while also being safe enough to not die every fight. Game three started off great. Apparently if the enemy is stunned for like three seconds, all of a sudden I have the confidence to go in for a kill. But once again, I played way too safe. Like with this fight right here, I was so scared of dying, I just wasn't in range to do any damage and ended up costing us a kill in the end. But then I'd overcompensate sometimes with fights like this where I would make a super aggressive play and just die because I was trying to get closer to do damage. In the end, we lost again. And even though I think this was my best game so far, I was still making a lot of mistakes. So after my first three games, I realized I have a lot to learn about ADC. I didn't know how to space, my CSing was pretty inconsistent, and I just didn't understand how squishy I was. For the research segment, I watched Quack's only Ezreal guide you'll ever need, along with a few gameplay videos. From the guide, I learned a few things. One, your main spike is in the mid game after you get Trinity Force and Man Immune, so play around that. You're honestly kind of strong with just Sheen, so you can poke pretty well, but it's still hard to go for all out fights. Two, if you land your W, your E will always hit that target, which is actually pretty good for trades, as long as you make sure you don't need your E soon after. <laughs> Three, always pay attention to the map to snipe people with your ult. Not only can this get you some extra gold, but it also super tilts your opponent. I got really good at this. And four, sometimes use your ult to thin waves across the map. This can slow split pushes and buy your team enough time to secure an objective or rotate. My last normal game was almost a disaster. I don't know how I missed this Q, and luckily Soraka landed her slow, or else Sivir would have barely escaped. Then it was my turn to barely escape. After I killed Ramus, I had to run for my life, and somehow I managed to live with one fucking HP. Also, the Vagar died, so you know he was pissed. Oh yeah, I got my first of many old snipes a few minutes later, which felt amazing. Then I got another snipe like two minutes later. Honestly, these ults are one of the best things I've ever experienced in League of Legends. Like seriously, I'm so fucking good at this game, man. At about the 20 minute mark, there was a big fight where I actually managed to get two kills just to die to the most bullshit Silas chain I have ever seen. Then my top bard TP'd mid to try to be a hero. Thank just you. for him to make the most useless bard portal I have ever seen and then just ghost and run away. In the end, Bard Top made this game basically a 4v5, and even though I went 3 and 15, I wasn't able to carry. I definitely was starting to feel more confident and comfortable on Ezreal, and I was pretty excited to play ranked. 
After my normal games, I came up with a couple of goals for myself during this challenge. One, play a little more aggressively. Not too aggressively, just enough to do a bit more damage. Two, land my freaking cues. Seriously, this shit is hard. And three, just try to get more ult kills because they're awesome. My first ranked game was a complete masterpiece. It started off with a first blood on the support MF. <laughs> Then another kill on MF when she stepped up too far. Then another kill on Zeri under tower, making her miss a ton of EXP and gold. And a few minutes later, I got a double kill, and at this point, I was omega fed. But fast forward to 19 minutes, and all of a sudden, we were losing all over the map. And despite sucking booty cheeks on AD carry, I somehow managed to win this huge fight mid. Seriously, this lane makes me feel like a main character of a fucking anime. I had to carry this game. I kept this good attitude going, getting another unofficial triple kill while fighting for Dragon. While we were doing this, York was taking our base, but we won the fight and got Dragon, so worth. In the end, we won the game, and I was so proud of the way that I played. I did the most damage by far, and I played more aggressively without dying too much. Unfortunately, game six was a total disaster. It started off with me misplaying a fight bot by missing both my W and Q, so we both died because of it. But then my Blitz just literally walked up and died? He didn't use a move, he just died. Then I died because I thought I could bait her to dive me under tower and then level up and kill her, but I just took too much damage and died. Then I got ganked by Rengar and died again. Luckily, we bounced back a little bit and shut down the vein, but we were still pretty far behind at this point. But immediately died again trying to kill Kennen. I mean, holy Fuck, he did a lot of damage. However, I got the final laugh because I did snipe him with my ult as soon as I came back alive. Seriously, I am actually so good at landing these ults. Yes, he did! Oh, I'm so fucking good at this game, holy shit. In the end, this game was really bad. I lost lane, had no idea what to do when Rengar ulted me, and I CS'd very poorly this game. The last game of the hour started off pretty well. We got an early kill even though I did not focus my targets correctly. Then, due to our early kill, we ended up getting 4-man ganked bot and I died. But the fight actually went surprisingly well, with us getting 4 kills and the enemy team only killing me. Unfortunately, things started going downhill when we lost a big fight bot lane. Yeah, after that, we just lost every fight. We had no way of killing the enemy Briar, as she just shredded our whole team. I don't know if I just don't know how to play against Briar or what, but I am going to permaban that champion from now on. Because she just walks through our enemy team and kills everyone. Like, this is insane. So after that, I needed a bit of a break for the day, and I was ready to start climbing tomorrow. And I'm, um, well, the first game did not go off to a great start, with Kaisa getting really far ahead in the first 15 minutes of the game. But to be honest, I don't really know what happened this game. We spent most of the game losing, and then out of nowhere our Nar became a monster and was able to just start carrying fights, even though I missed every single Q. There were so many times we should have lost this game, but each time we barely managed to survive. I was basically a non-factor, and my team just dominated fights pretty much without me. But unfortunately, the miracle comeback had to come to an end. Jarvan overstayed in the enemy base, and the enemy team just kind of walked into our base and killed us. Wait, Silas just walked up and died? Wait, this fight is winnable? Wait, kill Akali! Okay, now kill Fiddlesticks! Okay, kill Kaisa! Actually, no, fuck Kaisa, she's too mobile! Kill Melio! Holy shit, I can't believe we just won this fight! Win, 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 end! Yeah, somehow we managed to win this game. I'm surprised too. Game 9 was the most wild game I have ever played. But it didn't start off very well. I took way too much damage trying to hit level 2 first, and it led to me dying a few minutes later. Luckily, my team cleaned up the kills though. The reason this game was so wild was because we were fighting constantly. Just to help you understand, by 15 minutes, not a single person in the game had 100 CS, and there were already 30 kills this game. Once again, I had no idea what happened this game, but I did manage to get another ult snipe kill. Well, we won this game too, which was nice, but my goodness this was a clown fiesta. Game 10 was a little silly. For some reason, the enemy Yumi decided to just walk off and we killed her immediately. Then, a little later, she did it again. This fight was a little bit closer than it probably should have been, but I don't know what this Yumi was doing. Then Yumi did the exact same play for the exact same ward and died again. This time Blitzcrank and I actually killed MF as well, and if I were her at this point, I would just AFK. 
Yeah, this game got out of control for the enemy team very quickly. Cho'Gath was kinda big, but it just wasn't enough to carry the game for them. And just like that, I was on my final hour. And at this point, I was actually pretty close to hitting Emerald, so I needed to win. And my first game started off great with the enemy team having a failed gank, which resulted in multiple kills for my team. A little later, I earned my first kill bot lane, and I think this is a good time to talk about the enemy comp. They had four AP champions and a singed jungle, I guess. Anyway, my build will be a little different this game to focus on MR. At about the 9 minute mark there was a big fight around Dragon where Pike and I managed to 2v3 and kill everyone and then we got Dragon right after. Then there was another Dragon fight where we once again managed to kill all of them and I got another triple kill. Apparently building tons of MR against a mostly AP team is pretty good. I'm sure you probably could guess how this game ends but you probably didn't know that I was just one win away from Emerald at this point. So did I win my next game and hit Emerald? No. It started off pretty well actually, getting an early kill bot. And things got even better when we got another kill with my ult. But unfortunately every lane lost pretty hard other than bot, the enemy team got barren and they just started to outscale us. Also I kind of ented here against Akshan, I thought I'd kill him but then I forgot about his shield. Unfortunately we just slowly started losing fights harder and harder until we just lost the game. This game was actually pretty tilting for me because I know with the start I had, I should have been able to do more to help carry this game. So with the challenge on the line, Emerald within my grasp, what did I do? Okay, okay, okay. I'm making it seem like it was worse than it really was. Hey, I didn't play the greatest, but I still put out some decent damage in fights, and I understood this game was one where I just had to play safe and let my team carry. Look, games like this happen all the time. I just needed to keep my cool after dying a bunch early and just try to make the game as easy as possible for Diana to carry the game without throwing or getting caught out too much. So I won this game and was still 2 LP away from Diamond, so I decided to play one final game. And my real last game actually started off really well, killing Asol under tower. But a few minutes later I ran into an ADC's worst nightmare, Assassins. Because of these assassins, my final build was uh, pretty weird. After Trinity Force, I built Maw in order to not die to Akali and Aesol because they just did a lot of damage, and I already knew Maw was good because I built it a few games ago. My next item was Frozen Heart to help me survive against Rengar and Irelia. The mana helps with the man immune, the ability haste is always great on Ezreal, and the armor in slow was just really good against Rengar and Irelia. My last item was Black Cleaver for a little more HP and some armor pen. I was pretty nervous this game because I really wanted to promote, so I built a little bit too safe possibly. Also, this last death I took 3 tower shots and I was pretty sad about it. Anyway, I won my final game and actually managed to hit Emerald on a champion I have never played on my least played role ever. In the end, I went from Plat 1 0 LP to Emerald 4 1 LP and honestly I felt really good on Ezreal. Do I think Ezreal is strong? Yes, but it's hard to do consistent damage with him. He's great at staying alive in fights, but because you have to land so many abilities to actually do damage, he can be a little bit difficult, especially in chaotic fights. Overall, Ezreal was a blast to play, sniping people with my ult was the best, and I can't wait to play AD carry again. Let me know who you want to see next in the comments.